We turn in our Bibles, brothers and sisters, to the book of Psalms, the 29th division. Psalms, the 29th division. Psalms chapter 29, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 9. Psalms 29 and verse number 9. And our topic for tonight is God's temple, His glory, your health. Let me say that again. God's temple, His glory, and your health. And we open in our Bibles to Psalms, the 29th chapter, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 29. Oh, I'm sorry, verse number 9 to get our foundational scripture for tonight. And the Bible says this, The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to cast, and discovereth the forests, and in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. So we see here, brothers and sisters, a most a profound scripture here from the word of God. And even we're just going to focus on this last part of the scripture, though the first part is very relevant, very important, very prophetic, but we'll leave that for another study. But in this last part of the scripture, it says that in his God's temple, does everyone speak of his glory? We want you to write down, if you take your notes, brothers and sisters, three things. We don't want you to write down the word temple or God's temple also that everyone speak and thirdly of his glory I'll say it again we want to write down God's temple or the temple and also we want to write down everyone speak and also of his glory these three things we want to examine this day we want to unpack we want to unravel or peel back the uh, understanding of the scriptures that we may gain a, a truer spiritual understanding, even experience from this passage of scripture. We want to know this first, brothers and sisters, as it says yet again at the last part, and in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. We want to understand firstly and foremost, what is this glory that everyone is speaking of? What is God's glory? Exodus book of Exodus is this Exodus Exodus chapter 33 Exodus the 33rd chapter Exodus chapter 33 and verse number 18 Exodus 33 and we dropping our eyes down to verse number 18 what is God's glory that each and every one is speaking of it says this Exodus 33 and verse 18 the Bible says and he said I beseech thee Show me thy glory. Let's stop right there. We see here in this passage of the scripture, Moses is beseeching, is begging God eagerly to reveal or to show his glory unto him. Let's notice as this conversation continue on what God says to Moses. Verse 19 says this, and he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So let's stop right here. So God's response to Moses was, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and also he will proclaim the name of the Lord, notice what it says in verse number 22, as we put scripture with scripture, coming to a clear understanding of what is this glory. Verse 22 says this, and it came to pass while my what glory passeth by that I will put thee in a cleft of a rock. Let's stop right here. We just seen in verse number 19 that God said he was going to make all his goodness pass before Moses, but in verse 22, he says he's going to make his glory pass before Moses. So this goodness also is God's glory. Say that again. God's goodness that passes before Moses is also his glory. And not only is the goodness uh, a symbol or also synonymous with glory, in verse 19, it says that his name is also connected with his glory. Let's notice chapter 34 now. Exodus 34, Exodus 34, dropping our eyes down to verse number five. Exodus 34 and verse number five, still coming to a clear understanding on what is this glory that everyone that's in the temple is speaking 
of Exodus 34 and verse 5, the Bible says this. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there. Or so with Moses there. And proclaimed what? The name of the Lord. We just found out that the name of the Lord is synonymous with the glory of God. So what is this name or this glory? What is it a symbol or what does it represent? It says this in verse six. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation of brothers and sisters. So we see here from this passage of description, Exodus 34, verse 5 through verse number 7, that God proclaimed his name or he made known his glory. What was his name or what was his glory that he was proclaiming to Moses? It says that his name or his glory was the Lord the Lord God or merciful, gracious, long suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. What are these things? These things are God's character. These things are God's character. So God's name, God's glory, God's goodness is his character, brothers and sisters. It is his character. So as we come back and draw back to our minds in Psalms, 29 and verse 9 when it says that in his temple does everyone speak of his glory it's actually talking about individuals speaking of God's character amen God's character so we just looked at this understanding of the glory of God or which is I should say the character of God but we want to continue to un unfold this scripture as we just looked at the glory we now want to look at Everyone speak. What does it mean that everyone in God's temple is speaking of his character? How do we interpret this? What say of the scriptures about everyone is speaking of this? What is this called? Psalms chapter 50. Psalms the 50th division. And it shows us and it espouses even more clear on what these things mean. In Psalms, the 50th division. Psalms is the biggest book in the Bible. If you turn to the middle of your Bible and open it up, you should find the book of Psalms. We're looking for Psalms, the 50th division, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 7. Psalms 50 and verse number 7. We're looking at now this part of everyone speaking of this glory. We just found out that the glory is the character of God, but we're looking at this idea now of everyone speaking of this glory. What does it mean that everyone spoke of this? It says this in Psalms, the 50th division, in verse number seven, the Bible says this, hear, O my people, and I will what? Speak. O Israel, I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. We see something very amazing here, brothers and sisters. We see connected to speaking is testifying. I'm going to say that again. Connected to speaking is testifying. So when one individual speaks, he is also testifying of something. Let's add another scripture to this. John. What book did I say? John. John, the third chapter. John, chapter three. Let's get the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In John, the third chapter, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number three. You have the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke. And John, we're looking for John, the third chapter, and we're dropping our eyes now to verse number 11. Because when we look at individuals speaking, they are actually testifying. They are bearing witness of something. These individuals that are in this temple or in God's temple, and they are speaking of his glory or his character, they are testifying of God's glory and his Character, don't take my word for it. Notice what it says here in John chapter 3. John 3 and verse number 11, the Bible says this. Verily, verily, Christ says, I say unto thee, we speak that what we do know and testify that we have seen and received not our, received not our witness. But we see here, brothers, yet again, connected to speaking 
is also testifying. So when it says that all these individuals in the temple or everyone in the temple speaks or testifies of God's character, brothers and sisters. They testify of God's character. All right. I hope we still uh, uh, all going along smoothly right now. I hope it's clear unto you as we start to pick up and go a little bit deeper. It says this, or I should say this, or ask this question. How can these individuals testify of God's character? I'll say that again. How can these individuals testify of God's character? Matthew, let's turn to the book of Matthews now. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew's the 12th chapter explains this very clearly for us. Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 34. Matthew chapter 12. And we're dropping our eyes down to verse number 34. And our question is yet again, how can they, these individuals, testify of God's glory or of his character? It says this in Matthew 12 in verse number 34. It says, O generation of vipers, Christ speaking. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of what? The heart, the mouth speak. We see here, brothers and sisters, from this passage of scriptures, that out of the abundance of the heart, or the mind, the mouth speak of. And continue on, it says this in verse 35. A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringing forth good things and even evil men out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. So it's talking about those who have the character of God in their hearts, in their minds. They're allowing God every single day to write upon their hearts the law of God, the character of God. Therefore, therefore, they can testify or bear witness. They can speak of God's glory or his character in his temple. They have it in their hearts, brothers and sisters. It's in their hearts. They have experienced true heart religion, brothers and sisters. It's not a false pseudo religion, not a, a false pseudo experience. They know Jesus for themselves. Their characters, their lifestyles have been changed. Christ has given them victory over faulty characters. They have given them victory over drinking, have given victory over fornication, have given victory over all the things of this world. They are gaining day by day a deeper experience, deeper Yet, brothers and sisters, as the song say, deeper yet, they are uh, gaining a deeper experience in Christ day by day, and they are basically pressing on the upward way. New heights they gain it every day. Brothers and sisters, they have this experience with Jesus Christ, and they are overcoming. They have the law written in their hearts and in their minds. That's why they can testify of it. When you speak about this testifying, brothers and sisters, it's just not only, per se, speaking verbally out of the mouth, but it's verbally how you live. You say, what? Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 2, I believe it is. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 2, because this speaking or testifying of this, uh, uh, of God's character is not just purely opening up your mouth and speaking of it. It's also dealing with a heart experience, a true conversion experience. It's talking about how you live daily. It says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse number, I'm going to start with verse number two. Second Corinthians chapter three and verse number two, as we look at this understanding yet again on how these individuals are able to testify or bear witness of God's character because the law is written within their hearts and is lived out in their life. Therefore, their lifestyles testify, bear witness or speak of the character of God. God, it says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2, ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all what? Man, he said ye, because an epistle, if an uh, individual don't know, an epistle is a letter, just as this book of Corinthians was a written letter by Paul's hand, as he wrote this letter, as we're going to find out, with ink, we're going to find out that God desires to write 
his character, yea, even his law within our hearts, that our lifestyles may testify or bear, be bear witness that all men can see the glory of God by how we live. It says this in verse two again, ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of who? Of Christ, ministered by us, written not with what? Ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of what? Stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Brothers and sisters, God desires to write the law yet again in our hearts by his Spirits that our lifestyles, that we will be known and read by all men. Well, without saying a word, we walk into a room, an individual could look and see that we had the character of God by how we walk, how we talk, how we dress, brothers and sisters, how we treat one another. They can see that this individual is a child of the true and living God, a true and living God. So Every one of these individuals that are in God's temple not only can speak verbally by their mouth and basically speak about the character of God because it's written in their heart, but they live it in their daily life that you can see it without them saying the word. Amen. Amen. Now let's look, brothers and sisters. Now we want to look and tr transition now as we looked at this understanding of God's glory, which is his character. We just looked at these individuals that speak of his glory or testify of his character by word and also by deed or how they live their daily lifestyle. We want to look at this understanding of the temple now. This understanding of the temple as we turn to the book of Luke, Luke 19. What book did I say? Luke. Chapter 19, Luke, the 19th chapter. And we're going to drop our eyes down to, hmm, matter of fact, let's, let's, we're going to come back to Luke. Let's go to Mark. Mark 14. Let's try that one first. Mark 14, the second book of, or the second book of the New Testament. You have the book of Matthew and the book of Mark. Mark 14, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 49. Mark 14 and verse number 49. As we look at, yet again, this idea of the temple, because it says in Psalms 29 and verse number 9 that in his temple, Everyone speaks of his glory. Let's look at the understanding now of this temple. Let's lay, look at the principle here. In Mark 14 and verse number 49, it says this, speaking about, or Christ speaking here, it says, I was what? Daily with you in the temple. What was Christ doing in the temple? Teaching, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. I want you to notice that you're probably turning or going in your mind right now, why are we looking at this scripture? What does this scripture have to do with anything? I want you to notice in this scripture yet again, it says Christ was daily in the temple doing what? Teaching. teaching. So Christ is daily in the temple teaching. Keep that in mind. Let's look at Luke now. Luke 14. I'm sorry, Luke 19. What book did I say? Luke 19. Luke 19. And we're dropping our eyes down to verse number 47. Luke 19, as it basically says the same thing here, as we put another principle, we're looking at this idea of the temple now. Luke 19 and verse 47. Luke 19 and verse number 47. Amen. Once you get there. Amen. Luke 19 and verse 47. Amen. Luke 19 and verse 47. The Bible says this. And he talking about Christ taught how often daily, daily in the temple. Let's stop right there. So we see here yet again that Christ taught how often in the temple? Daily. daily. So Christ is teaching daily in the temple. Question. What is Christ teaching in the temple? What is Christ teaching in the temple? He's daily in the temple teaching, but what is he teaching? Luke chapter 20 and verse one lets us know. Luke 20 and verse number one, the Bible says this. And it came to pass that on one of those days, he, talking about Christ, taught the people in the temple and preached the what? Gospel. gospel. So let's stop right here. So Christ is teaching what in the temple? The gospel, brothers and sisters. The gospel. We see here a most essential truth that Christ was daily in the temple teaching or preaching the 
gospel, preaching the teaching of the gospel, brothers and sisters. Now, this is about to get very, very interesting now. As we transition in the message, Christ taught how often in the temple? Daily. Daily. What did he teach in the temple? The gospel. the gospel. He taught the gospel in the temple. Let's notice something now. First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six and verse number 19. Someone should know where I'm going now. First Corinthians chapter six and verse number 19. First Corinthians chapter six, verse number 19 and verse number 20 for those who take your notes. First Corinthians chapter six and verse 19 to 20. The Bible says this. What? Know ye not that your body is the what? Temple, Temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your what? Oh. Own. For ye are brought with a what? Price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are who? Which are God. So we see here from this passage of scripture that also the temple is just not the literal building when God's people dwell together and come together to worship him. But the temple is also a symbol or a replication, I should say, of our bodies. So if that is the case, if the temple is, matter of fact, you can write in your notes also. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 and 17. We don't have to go there, which basically says the same exact thing. These temples are God's, or I should say the temple is our body. The temple is what? Our body. So, so the principles we just learned from the book of Luke and the book of Mark says that Christ taught how often in the temple? Daily. He taught daily. What did he teach in the temple? He taught the gospel in the temple. So could it be, brothers and sisters, that in this temple, our human bodies, that Christ is daily teaching us the gospel? Hmm. Hmm, you missed that. Every single day, daily, Christ is in the temple teaching the gospel. So daily, we can study the body and find the gospel being preached unto us by Christ. So, oh, do you believe that, brothers and sisters? Yet again, this body, as we study anatomy and also physiology, we can see the principles of the gospel being taught to us by Christ in these human bodies. All right, all right, all right. It got, it got quiet there, brothers and sisters. As we look at each cell, at each a uh, uh, tissue at each organ at each organ system they are all in our bodies teaching the what the gospel they are all teaching or testifying of God's glory when it says that every one of them Psalms 29 and verse 9 says every one of them is what speaking of his glory or speaking of God's character every cell Every tissue, every organ, every organ system in our body is speaking, is testifying of God's glory right in these human bodies, brothers and sisters in Psalms. 139 and verse 14, the Bible says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Brothers and sisters, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. These bodies are teaching us the gospel, brothers and sisters, from the most leasest element, the most uh, leasest unit, even the human cell is preaching the gospel unto us. Christ is there teaching, but the question is, are we studying? Are we hearing? Are we learning from the gospel that's been taught right in our human bodies, brothers and sisters? Right in our human bodies. Let's turn to the book of Job as we go just a little bit deeper. The book of Job. What book did I say? Job. Job 38. Job, the 38th chapter. Job chapter 38, and we're dropping our eyes down to verse number 36. Job 38 and verse number 36. As we just go a little bit deeper in this understanding of the gospel of health, even from these temples. That's why the title is God's Temple, His Glory, Your Health. Right here even in our bodies. We're in the book of Job 38. Job 38, and we're dropping our eyes down to verse 36. 
Job, the 38th chapter, and we're dropping our eyes down to verse 36. Look at this most amazing passage of scripture here. Job 38 and verse 36, the Bible says this, who have put what? Wisdom in the inward parts or who have given un understanding to the what? All right. All right. So we see here, brothers and sisters, that wisdom is put where? In the inward parts. Wisdom. God has placed this wisdom in the inner parts, even in our inner body, in each cell, each tissue, each organ, each organ system, God has placed wisdom in them that they may carry out their functions to keep you and me alive right now. Hmm. hmm. Let's add something else to that because we see that wisdom is put where? In the inward parts or in the body. In the what? Body. In the body. Let's look at uh, uh, Jeremiah now. What book did I say? Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah the 31st chapter, you have <clears throat> the book of Isaiah and then the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, and we're dropping our eyes down to verse number 3. I'm sorry, verse 33. Jeremiah 31 and verse number 33. Jeremiah 31 and verse number 33. As we put this another, you know, scripture to this understanding, because we just found out in the book of Job 38, that God has placed wisdom in the body. But not only has he placed this wisdom in the body or even in the cells and organs and the various systems that we have in our body, he placed something else there that tells us right here in Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3, the Bible says this. Jeremiah 31 and verse 33, it says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my what? Law in their inward parts. All right. So we see here that God will place his law in their inward parts. So not only did God place wisdom in the inward parts, but he also placed his law in the inward parts. So in the human bodies. And if we were able to study the human body, we could see this wisdom in this law. You know what this wisdom and this law that is placed together in the human body, yeah, even in the human cell is called the DNA. It's called the what? DNA. It's called the DNA. The DNA has every function, have everything that you need in each and every cell. The DNA tells your body what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and it knows all the functions of the body. So not only does it have the wisdom to tell this cell or that cell what to do and what time to do it, but also, brother and sister, it has set laws, for example, because it's something in the, the, the human cell, as we look at the human cell just for a moment, and something in the human cell, brothers and sisters, that's called uh, cell reproduction or cell duplication, let's say. Cell duplication in scientific terms is called mitosis. It's called mitosis where an uh, individual cell, after a certain amount of time, basically uh, duplicates itself. For example, say if you had a cell after, you know, 21 days, every 21 days, a cell is to basically duplicate itself or multiply itself and what basically lets that know is time to or let that cell know that it's time to multiply itself is the DNA. The DNA tells it, you know, 21 days is up is a law that every 21 days the cell must be multiplied. The DNA has that information. The DNA has that wisdom to basically help the cells to duplicate itself. To duplicate itself, brothers and sisters, that it may prolong life, that it will prolong life and that we may be able to continue to live. We continue to live. But you say, preacher, how is this preaching the gospel unto us? I thought you said Christ is in the temple, you know, teaching the gospel, brothers and sisters, as we look at the human cell, the smallest unit in the body is preaching the gospel unto us. How so? Because as we see that the cells have to duplicate themselves or duplicate their own character, Christ is basically teaching us as we study the human cell, his character must be 
duplicated. It must be reproduced. Every cell in the body that is basically reduplicating itself is fulfilling God's commission in Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at it. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1 and verse number 26. Genesis 1 and verse number 26. Brothers and sisters, our body is still obeying the commandments of God. Brothers and sisters, everything else but man seems to be in rebellion against the commandment of God. But even our bodies, if we were study anatomy and physiology, our body is shown as true obedience to the will of God. Brothers and sisters, it's showing us if we were but study the Bible of uh, the body, it will show us the principles of the gospel, brothers and sisters. It says this in Genesis 1. Genesis 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. I'm sorry, upon the earth, verse 27, God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Verse 28, notice this. It says, and God blessed them and said unto them, be what? Fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. So we see here from this passage of scripture, part So we see here, brothers and sisters, yet again from this passage of scripture right here in Genesis chapter one and verse number 28, that God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He told Adam and Eve to be fruitful, to multiply, not this only in children, brothers and sisters, by having all these children upon the earth, but they were to multiply the character, the glory of God. So just as they were to multiply or reproduce the earth with the glory of God by having children, their very bodies, their very cells would show the same exact thing. They would multiply or duplicate themselves to reveal the glory or the character of God even within their own bodies. Hmm. Hmm, brothers and sisters. Hmm. This is Christ daily teaching us even from our human bodies. But many of us are like this passage of scripture we're going to look at here. Let's look at the book of Zechariah. What book did I say? Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3, I believe it is. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah. We turn it quickly to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, I believe this the scripture. Zechariah. I'm sorry, Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3, and we're looking for verse number 4. Zephaniah, the book before Zephaniah is the book of Habakkuk. And the book after Zephaniah is the book of Haggai. We're looking for Zephaniah chapter 3, and we're going to drop our eyes down to verse number 4. Because while our bodies is teaching the character of God by every cell, by every member that's in the body is testifying or speaking. Speaking of the glory of God, many of us are not taking hold of it. Many of us have no recollection, no understanding that the body is teaching us the gospel, brothers and sisters. We're not even taking care of these bodies. We are, many of us are even as this text says here in Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse number 4. The Bible says this in Zephaniah 3 and verse number 4. The Bible says this, her what? Prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have what? Polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They have done what to the law? Violence. Now, time out. God placed the law where? In the inward parts. Yeah, even in the cell. So if these priests who were basically the leaders of the sanctuary were basically the leaders of the temple, did violence to the law. Are we not priests of our own bodies? Are we not in charge of these bodies that are not our own? But are we like these priests doing violence to the law? What law? The law of our DNA. The law of our DNA, brothers and sisters. Are we by our habits, by our eating, by drinking, by dressing, by our various lifestyle doing 
or violence to our DNA, brothers and sisters? Have we altered the law within our bodies? You say altering the law within our bodies, brothers and sisters, even when you look at this text right here. This is a most important text, even when we look at the understanding of the bodies on even when things go wrong, how disease come in. You know what cancer is? This is a perfect text for cancer, brothers and sisters. Because you know what cancer do? Cancer alters the DNA. It changes the law in the DNA. So if a cell had to duplicate itself every 21 days, if that was the proper way of doing things, when you have a cancerous cell or a tumor, Basically, the DNA is altered and changed, and that cell that should re or duplicate itself every 21 days now duplicates itself every two days. And basically, what you have in the body is a bunch of cells that has basically multiplied themselves because their law or the DNA has been changed. They have no function or anything to do, but yet again, they're still away nutrients. They're still in way water. They're still in way oxygen from your cells who are working to do and to prolong life, brothers and sisters. Are we placing our bodies in a condition where we are doing violence to the law? Where we are basically laying the foundation for cancerous cells in our bodies, brothers and sisters. In our bodies. In our bodies. We must take care of these bodies. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 31, whether therefore you eat or what? Drink or whatsoever you do, you must do all to the glory of God. All must be done to the character of God, brothers and sisters, that we may have healthy bodies that we, by God's grace, can stand and meet him when we have to give account yet again for these bodies. But getting back on to the topic, brothers and sisters, we see the gospel being preached from the human bodies, from our human bodies. But yet again, as we come to a close now, Matthew 26, Matthew 26, Matthew the 26th chapter. Let's just get ready to wind down here. Matthew 26, and we're dropping our eyes down to verse 55. Matthew 26 and verse number 55, because Christ is daily teaching in the temple. He's daily teaching in our bodies. They're even a gospel of health. But many of us are ignorant of these things. Many of us have no idea. Many of us take no time to understand, you know, where or uh, how our body operate or, you know, even where certain organ is. You know, someone say, where's your kidneys? You say, up here. My kidneys up here. Kidneys up here. You know, where's your large in Texas? Down here. It's down there. Brothers and sisters, we don't we have no idea where the organs are in our body. Have we taken time to study the physiology of the body? Yea, even that God's spirit will enlighten our minds to preach the gospel unto us. Matthew 26 and verse 55 says this. Matthew 26 and verse number 55. The Bible says this in closing. And that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes. Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat how often? Daily, Daily with you in the teaching, and ye laid no what? Hold on me, brother, sisters. Jesus is verily teaching the gospel, preaching in your temple even right now. But the question is, are you taking hold of him? Are you taking time out to study the human body, yea, even under, to understand the gospel of health and show you the plan of salvation from your own body that you will be safe? Are you taking hold of these spiritual principles of the gospel from the human body today? Many are not taking hold of him, but many will, by God's grace, we pray. We're going to close here in Psalms, Psalms 107. Psalms 107 is our closing text here. Psalms, the 107th division. Psalms 107 and verse number 43. Psalms 107 and verse number 43 to those who are wise, to those who will basically take up this understanding of God's temple, his glory in your health. Those who will basically surrender their hearts and minds to the truth of God's word, yea, even unto his health 
message in these last days that these temples may be fitted to meet God in peace. And Psalms 107 and verse 43, the Bible says this, whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord, brothers and sisters. So whoso is wise? Are you wise, brothers and sisters? Are you wise? If you are wise, you will start to examine yourselves, literally. Examine yourselves, both spiritually and physically, that God may do a work from within and from within out brothers and sisters this is our hope this is our desire that you will surrender all to christ and even take hold of his gospel of health principles taught from your own body let us close with a word of prayer our father who art in heaven we thank you father for this understanding of your gospel even from our bodies, your temple, your glory, but you want to bring physical, yea, even spiritual health in these bodies. We pray, dear Lord, that you would quicken our minds and our hearts, that we would reach out the arm, our arm of faith to take hold of you and apply these principles to our daily life, that you may save us and use us to be a witness to all others. This we ask and pray in Jesus Christ's worthy name. Amen. Amen.